Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to show you how easy it is to install WordPress on your own web host. Okay, so first order of business is to get access to the WordPress files. So I'm over at wordpress.org slash download, and I'm going to download WordPress, which is free. Okay, I've got it downloaded, so I've got WordPress, and I've got all the files right here for it. So I'm going to come back to these later, but step one, download WordPress so you have those available to you on your local computer. Now, next order of business is I'm over here at FileZilla, and FileZilla is a free, open source, file transfer protocol client and I'm in. Now for this particular web host, my main folder is called my public HTML folder. I'm going to go right in there. Now you could install WordPress right into this main folder and if so then you don't really need to be prepping it first here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a directory, a subdirectory break basically, and I'll call it WordPress. And I intend to install WordPress into this subfolder. So basically it'll be like mysite.com slash WordPress as opposed to just mysite.com. So my intention is to put my WordPress installation right in here. I'm not going to do that right now. I just wanted to have that folder prepped and ready to go. Next order of business. So by the way, if step one is download WordPress, get that ready. Step two is make sure you have a space on your web host and your website to install the future WordPress. Step three, I'm going to head over to my um, to my website, to my web host, and I've got to prep a database that WordPress is going to use. So I'm going to head over to ralph.coc-cis.com slash cpanel. The web host that I'm using for this demonstration uses cpanel as its main interface. So I can log into my account using this. Okay, so now that I'm logged in, this is my first time logging in here, so it's giving me these prompts. I'll say, no, I'm fine, thanks. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to, this is cPanel, super common interface for web hosts. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the databases area. Here we go. And I'm going to use the MySQL database wizard. MySQL is the brand of database that WordPress uses. So I'm going to click on the MySQL database wizard, MySQL. And I have to give my database a username. I have to give it a password. Um, I have to give my database a name. That's what I'm doing here. This is going to be pretty easy. So my new database name, I'm going to just go and call it uh, DB1. And I should be making a, a little list of these off to the side. So that way I can remember them later. You will need these references later. So I've got my database. It's got a name. Next step is to give my database a username. And I'll just use one of these old usernames here. OK, and a password. OK, and I've got that password recorded. And you're actually going to see this password in just a second. Um, all right, so my database has a name. My database has a user. My database has a password. I'll go ahead and create. Don't need to record that. And I'm going to give my database user all privileges. And then next step, done. Database is created. OK, so that's step three is prepping the database. Step four is to go into that WordPress file that you downloaded before. And the specific file that you need is the WP config file. Now they call it WP config sample. And you want to open that with whatever text editor you use most often, whether it's Notepad++ or just plain old Notepad if you wanted to. I'm going to open up mine with Sublime Text. So here it is. This is my WP config sample file. And you need to edit a portion of it right here. You have to give your web server, your web host, the name of your database, username, and password. So my database name is Ralph C O C underscore DB1. My database username, Ralph C O C underscore user or U O one. That looks good. And the password that I created was Altec Altec 357. So I got my database name, my database user, my database password. I'll so I got to put in those three pieces of information. I'm going to leave localhost. That's what it's going to be for most everybody. I'm going to scroll on down to this encryption key area. Let me zoom out a bit so you can kind of get an overview of this. And I'm going to go to the website provided here. Let me zoom out even more. I'm going to go to this particular website. There we go. Copy back on my browser. Paste. Let me get some new encryption key information. I'm going to paste it right in here. Excellent. And I'm going to do a file save as. Now, when I resave this file, I'm not going to save it 
as wp-config sample. I want to get rid of the dash sample. This is just wp-config php. I can save that and now in my WordPress files you'll see that I have wp-config.php. I technically don't need that sample anymore so I can get rid of that. Now these are the files that I need to publish to my web server space. I still have FileZilla open from my earlier step. So on FileZilla, I basically need to take these WordPress files and upload them. So I'm going to select them all. Just do a Control A to select all. So I'm getting these three folders, WP Admin, Content, and Includes, and all these random files here. I'm going to put those onto the remote side of my FTP client. And this is going to take a couple minutes to upload, so I'll just go ahead and pause while that's doing its thing. Okay, that process is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that, and I really don't need this open anymore. I can close that. Don't need that anymore. Back over at the browser, now for the ultimate test. I head over to ralph.cc-cis.com slash WordPress, which is where I installed that, Word, that WordPress system, those WordPress files. Press Enter. And if you're successful, you should get a screen like this. The very first time you go to a new WordPress site, you are prompted to create that WordPress site. So I'll click Continue, give my site a title, username, and password. So this username and password is for managing your WordPress site. The username and password that I created before was for the database that WordPress uses. And then, of course, I still have a username and password for access to my web host that I use in FileZilla that I created before the video started. So lots of usernames and passwords to keep track of. Use different ones for everything. So never use the same combination of username and password for two different accounts. And there you go. So that is how easy it is to set up a new WordPress site.